Hi, this is the intro for my video. You know that because I just told you it is at the beginning and you can see this handy little progress bar going across the bottom of the screen. And this progress bar is what the entire video is about. I have made a free preset for DaVinci Resolve that is this progress bar and it can look like this or 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 like this. And it's really cool and I am going to be giving it away to all of you today. So stick around, we're gonna walk through how to use it, how easy it is to set up and some of the really cool flexibility it has. Intro over. First off, I'm really excited about this preset because it is something I see all over the place, especially on social media, places like stories or any sort of vertical video. A simple progress bar along the bottom of the screen, the top or the circle I have as well, or going around the entire square of the frame is a really easy way to communicate to the viewer how long this video they're watching is going to take. They watch for a few seconds, see how far they are into the video, and they might actually be tempted to stick around to the rest of the video if they see that they've already made it a decent way in. So if you want access to this free preset to use or to follow along with this video, check the description. There is a link there to my Buy Me A Coffee page where this is hosted as a name your own price download. It is totally available for free as well. Check that out. All the links to my other free presets are also on that Buy Me A Coffee page. But once you have that effect downloaded and installed, which you can do by following along the README in the download, inside the edit page here in the effects library under generators, you will see a master progress bar preset and you can drag that right on your timeline in any composition. Now here to demonstrate, I have just a simple gameplay clip in this standard 16 by nine resolution. And when I dropped in, this progress bar by default takes five seconds. But if I want this progress bar to cover the entirety of my clip, then I can drag that to beginning and then stretch out this end to the end of the clip. And if you don't have snapping on, then you can press N while you're stretching it out and it will go right to the end of that clip. And then if I look, this progress bar takes this entire custom duration to reach the other end of the screen. And right away, you might see a little bit of an issue. It seems like an issue, it's not too much of an issue with this sort of like glitching out a bit. I believe that is a caching issue. If you select your clip, come up to playback, delete render cache, selected clips, you can clear that all and then you should have a much smoother playback. And if that doesn't solve it with the progress bar selected in the inspector, you can click this button to open it in the fusion page and that should clear out most of those false readings. But what's really exciting is that as soon as we drop this in, if we make sure we have this selected in the inspector, you'll see a host of custom controls. And right off the bat, you have this type that will change this from being a line on the bottom of your video to the top of your video, to a box that circles around the entire video. Again, taking just as long as you extend it. If you want this to happen much quicker, you can pull this down and it'll zoom much faster, but as soon as this clip ends, your effect will be complete. But I'm gonna keep this as a line bottom for now and show off some of these other controls. The first one being a border width. If I don't want this to be quite so chunky, I can pull this down or I can even ramp it up to be a bit more obtrusive. And I could enter a custom number here as well if I wanted to get even larger, but I'm gonna pull this down a bit. And if I jump back to line on the top, you'll see that the border width applies to all of these settings. So I'll even go to box and see this as well. And the next setting we have control over is this box starting point. If I shift this, you'll see that it sort of snakes around here. And this left side of this line now is where the line actually starts from. So I have it by default to start close to this uh, bottom left hand corner so it snakes around this way. But if you want it to start in another corner, you can also shift it there and it'll take the entire duration to snake around it that way. And I included the box starting point for one uh, really big but important reason. This effect will natively work in vertical resolutions if you're making a video for TikTok or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts or anywhere else. So I have this other timeline that is this vertical resolution. And if I drop that progress bar effect over it and stretch it out, you'll see that the bar goes along the bottom of the screen in the exact same way. But if I change this to a box, you'll see that by default, the starting point doesn't start in the corner. And that just has to do with the specific coordinate data and how fusion works. But I gave you that box starting point parameter. So now we could do this, shift the box starting point to that corner, and then over the course of this clip, 
it snakes around the entire frame. And I think especially on vertical content, this box looks great. And the final section of controls we have is around color, and these are pretty flexible as well. The easiest way to change the specific color is to just click on this box and you have access to all these controls. If I want it to be a specific color, I can just change that. The box instantly changes. But on this type control where it says solid color, I can change that and we have a few different cool options. These horizontal and vertical are horizontal and vertical gradients you'll see here where you now have two colors and then you can gradient in between them. Until vertical. And you have a four corner gradient which looks really interesting with this box preset. If I were to change this to be something a little more subtle maybe. You have tons of controls. And especially if you line this up with some of your branding, I think this could be pretty cool. And you do have a fourth option that is just gradient, but this is really interesting for this reason. You'll see that by default it is a horizontal gradient, but if we come over here to these view controls and shift this to fusion overlays, you'll see now that we get this line and this line actually dictates where this gradient sits. So if I bring this down to the corner, bring this up to this corner, you'll see that now we have this really cool diagonal gradient that we can do whatever we want to. And we could move these around if we want it to be a little more subtle or a little more stark if we only wanted one corner down, something like that. And these are even key frameable. So you could even keyframe this and over the course of this reveal, you could shift these up to create all sorts of different effects. I think this preset can be super valuable. As I start to push more things out on social media, I'll probably be using this all the time. And for channels or brands that do have a color palette set, I think this is super flexible for them. I also built this preset live on stream just last night. I am occasionally streaming here on YouTube. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any of those Resolve live streams or any cool more upcoming Resolve videos, especially ones that give out presets like these, please consider subscribing. Thanks, I'll see you next time.